Thank you, my best. Happy Valentine's Day to you too, my best. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're here in New Jersey talking to Sensei Luis Morales, a long time member of the martial art world. Yeah, it's going to be 51 years I've been training. Oh my gosh, this is an honor. But the honor is for me, but also to pass this information on. I get questions from people all the time about martial arts. Is it right for them? What are they doing? And things like that. And I always tell them, chase the philosophy. Find a teacher that can help you with the philosophy and you'll understand the true nature of martial arts. Yes. So we're going to start by you introducing yourself. Give us a little bit about your background. Sure. My name is Luis Morales. I was born and raised in the Bronx. Oh, South Bronx. South Bronx. I was Fox Street. Okay. And I've been doing karate, it's going to be 51 years I've been doing karate. And you started at what age? I started at the age of 12. Wow. You're, you're, who was your teacher? Um, my first teacher actually was in Taekwondo. Okay. As okay. Henry Show. Okay. And that was in the Bronx? That was in, the, that was in Manhattan. Okay. Then from there, I, I, I switched to Shogokan. So what encouraged you to start martial arts? Like what gave you... Uh, I was attacked by a gang, okay. by five guys. Right. I was in junior high, they were high school kids. Right. And I was with some friends and they cut out. Yeah. So ever since that, I've been doing cut out there. So my philosophy on martial arts is, is for life protection. Yeah. Right. So you've trained for the purpose of defense. Yes. Self-defense, family defense, village defense. Correct. Country defense. Correct. Right, okay. So how do you begin to build that philosophy? Well, well, how did you build it first for yourself before you start passing it on to yourself? Well, the first thing is the Udo, mm -hmm. which means martial way, military way. Mm -hmm. Actually, Bu means to stop a spear. Right. So it's really, Budo means really to stop conflict. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's my philosophy, right. to always avoid conflict. conflict. Right. Yeah. The last resort, then you protect yourself. Right. But if you can walk away, walk away. Mm -hmm. so that's my philosophy. So, and uh, in your, you started 12 years old training yes. Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Uh, what, what happened next? I switched to Shodokan. Okay. And then from Shodokan, I switched to Gojudo. Actually, I was doing Shodokan and Gojudo at the same time. Okay. And uh, I switched to Gojudo. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing Gojudo ever since. Uh, what was it about Gojudo that attracted you? I think it's, it was like more in fighting, mm -hmm. more grabbing. Right. So uh, I thought it was more practical. Right. I think if you want to do like sport karate, mm -hmm. do Shodokan. Oh, okay. They train with the long range. And, and you know, they got that Yakazuki right, going right, on. Right, right. So sport karate, Shodokan is great. And since you brought that up, let's talk about that difference between sport karate training or martial art training and like you're doing for life. Right. What do you think the philosophy well, between the, the two are? The philosophy is different because if um, if someone throws like a round kick mm -hmm. in sport karate, you block and then you counter. Mm -hmm. You see that everywhere, block and counter. Mm -hmm. In old style karate, life protection karate, when you throw the round kick, right. I'll be throwing a front kick oh. at the vital areas. It's like dragon. <laughs> 
Yeah. Is it like dragon style? Yeah. yeah. yeah so we attack. Right. We attack like in a sense we yeah. attack the attack. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You know. Okay. And we do a toe kick. Right. We overlap the toe. Yeah. Right. And we do toe kick. So up into the muscle. Up into oh, yeah. Right away. Yeah, yeah. You got like. Right there, yeah. You got liver nine here. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All these pressure points. Right. So we attack. So as soon as you lift your leg, we attack that limb. Okay. So different philosophy. Right. And you've been training, you've been uh, abroad training? Yes, I go to Okinawa almost every other year, every two years. Wow, how long have you been doing that? Well, I used to go more, I used to go like every year back in the 80s. Right. But you know, life change. Yeah. Things, so yeah. I try to go like every other two, every two years, two, right. every three years. Right. All the way back since 85, 84. Right. Mr. Morales, you might be asking, how, how old are you? I'm 62, I'll be 63 in March. And you contribute your perfect, I don't know how you want to say, your health towards your martial art training? Absolutely. Okay. I, keep, I, I try to keep limber, you know, keep right. my joints flexible, right. my body flexible, always constant moving. The key to life is to always keep moving. Mm. You have to keep your spine flexible. Right. If you have a stiff spine, your health will be no good. Right. So, okay. and uh, during your training, from that young to this point, what were some of the most difficult things you think you had to overcome? That's a good question. Um, I, I I didn't see any I, I didn't see any difficulties. Okay. I just trained. I didn't worry about anything else. Mm -hmm. I didn't worry about the guy next to me if he was better than me. Mm -hmm. I just train. Anybody that. I just go and train, and if I get my butt kicked, I get my butt kicked. Right. Right. Come back the next day. Right. So I think perseverance was my tolerance. Yeah, my yeah. tolerance, my perseverance was my key to continue. So I always try to teach when I teach to talk, talk about self awareness. You know, being being aware of yourself first before you, like you say, you didn't care about the people next to you. Right. You were there for your purpose. Right. How do you continue that? without being interrupted by so much outside influence? I don't know how to answer that, but uh, <laughs> I just stay focused, right? You know, I, I don't let nothing distract me, right? So like when I train, I just stay focused on what I'm doing. When I'm teaching my guys, mm -hmm. I just stay focused on, on, my, on my students. Right. How do you begin to train a student? That's, uh, I, I always call the beginners the novice, right? No experience, no nothing, but sometimes they come in with a certain expectation. Not so much of themselves, but of the teacher and of the art. What process do you put them through to help them understand that the most important thing that you say is first understanding yourself? Right. Well, the first tell them is to have patience. You have to have patience. If you don't have patience, you never will succeed in anything. Right. So that's the first thing I tell them. Patience, basics, basics, basics. Concentrate on your basics. Right. Once you get the fundamentals down, everything you could build upon. Right. If you have weak basics and you want to do this and that, your karate, your martial arts, regardless of what it is, is going to stay here. I'm talking to you. you know? So I'm going to ask you to so just kind of like elaborate a little bit on the basics, on the importance of the basics. Well, the, the basics teach you structure. Proper body alignment. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you stand wrong, it's not going to be as effective as if you stand proper. Right. So, can I get Michael? Mm -hmm. So, if I was to stand, let's say just use this as, as an example. If I was to stand, if I was to stand here, I'm facing him center, and I was to face it, and I do this lot. Right. Okay, it worked, right? But if I turn sideways more, it's going to hurt more. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I put if I put my power foot forward, mm -hmm. it will hurt more. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, that's what I mean about structure. How to stand, how to apply the technique. Right. I mean, you could throw a punch, but if I throw a punch this way, it will hurt more than if I throw a punch this way. Right. So that's what I mean by structure. It's running. So, so as you leave from that, let's lead into. I do kung fu. Right. And I know a lot of people, Kung Fu has a lot of forms. Karate has katas. Right. And people would say um, forms are useless or katas are useless. 
What is your view on that? Kata is the key to the arts. Mm -hmm. Regarding if it's Kung Fu or Karate, that's the key. Right. That has all the techniques from the ancient masters. Your key, your job is to understand what's going on. Mm. Is it a block? What's going on here? So for instance, you see everybody in Kata, yeah. do, but in the Kata high block, right. so they go right. high block. And then they turn, like in some Kata, after they yeah. block, they turn, right. and they go on to the next guy. Right. So right there, it's revealing to you that it's not a block. Mm. How are you just going to block it, turn and away? Turn the, next the guy's going to kill you. Right. So, maybe the high block is this. Oh, huh? destroy it. Yeah. yeah. Attack that pressure point. Destroy. <sighs> you know, that could be that could be the key. Right. Just like, for instance, everybody goes like this. Right. And then when they grab, they grab like this. Uh, no, grab the way, grab the way your hands are formed. Yes. Oh. Now it's different, huh? <laughs> yes, you can tell through yeah. the difference. Yeah. 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 Now I'm attacking body where it's like it's not the muscle tears. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> do whatever I want to do. Right, right. I was so, just discussing that with my student the other day. I believe that form is in each and every technique. But in order to get that form on the physical level, you first have to understand the form on the internal level. So, what's your view on that? Well, I think you have to learn the form first. Mm -hmm. Learn the movement of the forms on the physical level. On the physical level. Right. And then start analyzing it to internalize it. Right. So a lot of people can't make that transition. They can't go from the physical to the internal. It's not that easy. They, they don't see the um, the importance of it. I think, it's, I think it's because they probably just do it as an exercise. Right. They don't see the importance of it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they just wear the horse blinders. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. But I think that you should analyze every movement that's going on. Right. Say, what could this be? Mm -hmm. Is it a grab? Is it a tear? Is it a parry? Is it just one hand? What can it be? So right. I think the practitioners, it's the practitioner's job to analyze everything. And so the sensei or the sifu is there to guide you. Uh, but the sifu doesn't really have to give you everything. Right. He wants you to grow. So he probably just plants a seed and gives you a little bit. Right. It could be this. Yeah. And then you say, oh, it could be that. Right. And then you start oh, evolving. Awesome. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. I like that it's busy. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So, I understand what you're saying. My teacher would always tell me, um, don't be so naive. Don't believe everything I say. Because right. some of the things I say is just to help elevate your mind. So, to encourage you to go out and invest. Correct. Right? So, it kind of like reinforces what you just said. Right. The, I think, well, through the years that you've been teaching and training and so on, how has the, uh, the the ability to teach different genres of people Christmas. changed? Martial art itself is always changing. Correct. Some stores, there's a popularity and things like that. So the mentality of people training in martial arts also change. Correct. How have you seen the change? How so, do I see it? Yeah, how do you see the change? I mean, back in the 70s and 80s, karate was like, martial arts were like hardcore. You know, it was for life protection. It was like, this is it. Now, they, a lot of people do it as a hobby. You know, right. oh, let's go and do some martial arts. Right. Then they do the martial arts and then they go home and they don't even practice. Right. So, I see that. I see that. I see that as, as a big change right. compared to the 80s and 70s. Right. As a, as a teacher, how do you, like, how do you, um, well, your, your, your intensity is recognizable, right? your strength, there will be a hand and stuff like that. Through years of training, how do you teach the new generation the importance of that connection with your martial arts? Well, I try to teach them the philosophy of the martial arts. Okay, so you train their mind. Yes, I always try to tell them, you know, this is life protection, it's a way of life mm -hmm. that will help you physically and mentally. Right. So that's why I try to instill, especially on the young kids. Right. That they could take take it more serious and see yeah. the importance of martial arts. All right. And do you find that that works? That helps. It helps. Yeah. 
Sometimes people just brush it off, but it helps. All right. Yeah. Back to your training. Taekwondo. Shotokan. Shotokan. Goju. Okay. And this, obviously your love is Goju. Yeah, I love it. And then any other style beyond well, that? Well, I do Pak Me. Oh, okay. I'm still learning. You know, still beginner, but right. And then how do you find the philosophy between the two? Oh, I, f I, see, the, I see the connection. Okay. Like, um, I was learning this form called Gabu Doi. Okay. And I saw the connection with Seisan Kata, okay. the philosophy of, of the technique, mm -hmm. about how they pump to generate power. I mm -hmm. said, oh, it's the same as Goju Do. Right. So I see it's, it's a connection. My, my sensei, Tetsuhiro Hokama, mm -hmm. you know, everybody say, oh, karate comes from white crane and this and that. Right. You know, Goju Do comes from white crane. But my teacher in his lineage chart, he has Haka. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he has Haka. Really? Yeah, he's a haka. He's a very important. See the way the haka rolls your shoulders? We roll our shoulders. Wow, you're crazy. Yeah. Right? See the way you sink? We, we sink. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the four energies, yeah. right? We sink. So the but swallowing we, space. Yes, the yeah. same thing. Yeah. So modern karate, they go like this. Right. You see them like that, they look pretty. Right. Now it's this. You want to avoid yeah. the punch. That's true. You know? <laughs> so. I'll show you the lineage chart, I'll get it for you. Yeah, I'll show it to you. All right. So, uh, he says, ah, oh. so Sensei was in my house two years ago. He was doing a seminar, you know, trained, spent 10 days with me. And he was talking about Haka, mm -hmm. you know, so how we roll our shoulders, how we stick the shoulder blade out. Mm -hmm. It's all Haka. Mm -hmm. It's all Haka. Yeah. And then he started talking about the Haka people, mm -hmm. how they live, they lived in a round house. I take out this book, right? 300 years of Hakka Kung Fu, mm. and I show it to him. He say, "You see? Yeah. Oh, nice, beautiful." Yeah. So I went up get, giving him the book, right? Because everything begins and revolves back onto itself. Everything is a circle. Yes. Yes. And that's that's what Kama says his philosophy in karate. Right. Karate is circle 45. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the technique. Everybody thinks just everybody when it's when Hokama says it says. Circle in 45, everybody think it's just like circle in this. Right. No, circle in the hands too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you throw a punch, throw a punch. I don't want to do this, throw a punch. Throw it right here. I don't want to do this, throw a punch. Different, huh? Yes. I just absorb it. Right. I just absorb yes. it. Yes. Pop your arm out now. Right. I hit you. So you that's fine. Mass. Okay. Got you so that is finding the, the, the softness that's married in the hardness. Right. And vice versa. So what is gold judo? Uh, hard and soft. Right. Look at everybody. Look at you two. Mm -hmm. Where's the softness? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Where's the softness? You have to understand how this, what makes it soft is how you stand. Right. What makes it soft is the execution of the technique. Mm -hmm. Everybody tell them blocking soft because your hands are open. Mm -hmm. That's not soft, right? Okay. Meditation. Also, meditation. the hands can be strong, but the arms should be relaxed. Everything yeah. should be relaxed. Yeah, right. Everything, the limbs should be relaxed. Uh, do you spend time meditating? Yes. And, uh, like, how does that influence your training? Oh. Well, I think that the meditation clears my mind. I think it keeps me really focused. Mm -hmm. I try to meditate, not for a very long time. I don't sit like in Zazen. Mm -hmm. You know, like three hours, an hour. Right. I just cross my legs, sit, and I just stay there. Five mm -hmm. minutes, right. three minutes, it depends. Okay. It depends on how I feel. Yeah. But I try to do it every day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I heard there's a, a kata from China that is uh, one of the oldest forms of the martial art, and it has to do, it has a relation to the uh, goju. Do you know the form, the name? Uh, no, I don't know the name of it. I saw something briefly on YouTube a while ago and I wanted to remember to talk to you about it right. since you were doing right. Goju. But it has elements of one of the Goju forms and the guy was breaking it down, the difference. And not very many people know it anymore in China. Oh, I'd like to know what, what? Yeah, I'll find out and I'll That'd be great. to you, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what, what elements you find that uh, associated within white eyebrow and... Well, I see a lot of similarity in the technique, like in Gabu Doi, mm -hmm. when, when you go like this. Right. We, we do this. Okay, yeah. And there's a part when you go like this. Yeah. And you pump the yeah, leg. Yeah. 
And in Seisan Kata, we have, we have a part that we go like this, right? And this part, mm -hmm. when you apply it, you yeah. pump your feet oh, to okay. generate more power. Right. You get more power this way yeah. than just going right. than just going like this without pumping. Right, you get more power. So a lot of similarities. Okay. And, and uh, the sensitivity, as far as not the sensitivity, but as the, um, like Kung Fu and, uh, has more of a circular connection. Yeah, Goju has, has circular connection. Goju has more yeah. circular. Okay. And as far as the forms, I don't know we discussed this before, but I think this is part of what was missing, I thought was so important, is that a lot of people do forms and they don't, or they might think that forms are not, you can't fight with forms. Forms right. are useless. Forms are useless, kata is useless. I hear people say that. Oh, I just want to learn how to fight. That's because they don't understand kata. Right. They, they take they take the movement of kata literally the way it looks. Right. You know. Yeah. You know. Okay, you're gonna do hard blocking your kata, then you do a middle punch. Right. But in reality, in reality, you're not gonna. Right. In reality. You're not gonna just do this. Right. You know, you, you go, you pair, this is a block, it does the attack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. That's, that's hard right. block. Right. That's your hard block. Right. And of course, you move your body. You don't yeah. stay there like this. Right. So you have to learn how to weave, bob and weave like a boxer too. Right. But the movements, is applicable. But if you do it strict like this. Mm -hmm. that's so something. it's the same concept that each technique is, has its own individual life. And yes. then you learn to make the connection between yes. one and two. And you don't do the kata, you do the kata in a, se in a set pattern. Right. Right? Certain sequence, you don't break that sequence. Right. But in bunka, in application, yeah. you break the sequence. Right. Because you cannot fight in that. Right. There is no structured way to no. fight. It's yeah. just like the alphabet. You say, you say it in a sequence. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Can you write a word with that? No. And not, the only no. way you can write is N, O. No. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's telling you don't, don't do, do it. Don't do it, right. <laughs> you know? I thought of that. So, That's you take, good. I'll take A, I'll take W, I'll take E, mm -hmm. I'll take that S, I'll take that O, I'll take that M, I'll take that E. Right. I have to work awesome. Right. So, right. I'll do my techniques. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take this part right. from Geki Sai. Right. Right. And so, okay, go ahead. So I'll take this part from Gekki Sai. Now, uh, now I'll do Seitai. Okay. See, I take different parts right. of the katas, of right. the syllabus. Right. Of the katas. But in, in the kata, the, the, like you say, it's in sequence. Yes. Right. But in, in reality, you take it has no sequence. Yeah, you take bits and pieces from, from your form, and mm -hmm. you could take bits and pieces from your syllabus. Right. From your different forms. Right. So I could take a part of Seitai, I could take a part of Kurumfa. Okay. And make up a, the, okay. and make up a life protection techniques. You've been training for years. You've been teaching for how long? I've been teaching since I was in my teens, but right. professionally since I was about 28. Okay. And uh, you've been teaching here for how long? Since 2005. So you're at a come into a room and there's a bunch of novices. I always call beginners novices. Right and you have to say something to them to let them understand what they're getting into and the process that they'll have to go through. What do you say to them? It's not easy. Okay. There's a road tough ahead. Right. But be patient. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Try your best. Don't make excuses. And you see the progress and you see right. the transformation. And you leave that room into another room. There are a lot of experienced martial artists like yourself. Right. A lot of people who have given the time and the day to control to train and do the things that they have to. Oh, yes, you must.